talk about the future of Plone and my thoughts about Plone from a marketing perspective. Um, as we heard this morning, um, yeah, every time we, we talk about the future of Plone, it's more like um, a development topic. That's why I thought, okay, let's make something different and see what we can do to promote Plone and yeah. Um, let's just start with a quick o overview of what we're doing now. Um, I'm going to give you a, a quick introduction about me, what I'm doing, um, my company, about Plone. Then we're going to talk about our competitors. Just a uh, quick overview, Plone versus Drupal. Um, we're going to talk about brand awareness and then the things to do. And afterwards, I want to invite you to kind of like a discussion round. Um, and I'm curious to hear about your ideas, what we could do. Yeah, so. Let's start. Um, for those of you who doesn't, uh, don't know me, I'm um, Joanna Lehnhardt. Um, I'm project manager and junior marketing manager for um, Interactive um, and more or less m active member of the uh, Plon community since last year. Um, so Interactive is um, an online agency based in Cologne. Um, we are specialized in creating um, websites with open source CMS um, like Plone and Magento. And also we are into online marketing. Um, yeah, so I'm, um, as a project manager, I'm in charge um, of the communication between customers and our uh, developers as well um, as finding the best solutions for um, the wishes of our customers. Um, also, my job is kind of to ensure a smooth um, development of our project. And yeah, when I started last year, um, I just get to know Plone and I'm still learning um, to get all the insights of Plone. Um, yeah, so when I first started my job, I knew content management systems like WordPress and Continuo. So um, when I studied um, at a university, we used Continuo to uh, manage our content. Um, so what I didn't know then was what content management stands for and how it works. And so I started my little research about the whole, um, the whole topic. Um, and now I just give you a quick overview about Plone. So it was launched in 2001 and since then became one of the um, top percent of all um, open source projects worldwide. Um, we have over 350 solution providers in more than 100 countries and a huge community of developers working together to keep Plone up to date. Um, and it has been the strongest security, um, it has the strongest security f functionality of any open source CMSs available today. Um, but yeah, I think you all know all the facts. So let's see um, how Plown is positioned on the market compared to the uh, competitors. And um, yeah, we have on the one hand um, this huge system like WordPress. I don't know if you can see the um, numbers. So we have WordPress with a market share of um, around 60% which is huge. Um, we have four, m over 4.3 million websites using WordPress. Um, then we have systems like Joomla on like 
yeah, second, um, with a market share of um, 60, 61% and over 600,000 websites are using Joomla. Um, <coughs> and then we have Drupal with 4.8% market share and yeah, then we have Chrome with 0.1% market share. What, what's kind of sad. So if you compare um, all the systems, um, yeah, they are like 10 times, they have 10 times more websites. Um, so I want to, to um, just get to the target groups to uh, rule out some competitors. Um, we have WordPress and Joomla. They have totally different target groups than Plon has. So we can rule them out for comparing. And then we have Drupal. Um, so Drupal was launched in 2001 too and has become one of Plon's biggest competitors because uh, of the same target group and it and its flexibility. Um, it is also used by nonprofit organizations as well as governments like uh, the United States or France or the UK. Um, yeah, but I think we're gonna hear more about that topic tomorrow because uh, we're gonna have a talk about Plon versus Drupal and I'm very excited about it. Um, the huge difference between the two are, uh, I think, the language they speak. So we have PHP and Python. And as I was talking to other developers who work with PHP, they, yeah, Plone is mostly unknown as a system. Not the language Python, but as a system, Plone is, I don't know why that is. <coughs> but we're going to work on that. So, next topic is brand awareness. Does everybody know what brand awareness means? Yeah, for those who don't, I have here a short definition. So, brand awareness extend to which a brand is recognized by potential customers and is correctly associated with a particular product. In this case, it's Plon. Um, <coughs> and I, as I said before, um, I didn't know Plone at all or any other um, open source CMS um, except for WordPress, which is like an easy CMS. So my mother uses it to, to uh, manage her content for her website. So. I started and I was thinking, okay, so we have Plone, it's a great CMS for huge, huge websites or for intranet. And what can we do to, yeah, promote it to get more brand awareness? Um, in our company, we have big customers who need huge systems, but on the other hand, we have customers with small websites. And it's, for, for us, it's not easy to, to um, create a website with a budget of, let's say, 2,000 euro. It's, I think, compared to yeah, $2,500, some, something around that. Um, and the side, the, the customer wants that his side looks good. So we have to make, we have to make a good theme for it. And yeah, that's kind of hard. So I was thinking maybe we should think about other target groups and what can we do for the smaller companies so, they, so that they don't have to spend a lot of money for a beautiful website like creating more themes um, that you can just decide which one you want to have, which, which color you want to have for your website. 
Then I was thinking, what about advertising? Advertising like in start with Google AdWords, spend some money there if there is money. Um, and what we did was make Plon more popular on our website. So um, as we are speaking now, we are um, writing a blog about the Plon conference. We wrote a blog about last year's conference and we want to um, write the blog so that everybody can understand what is happening. So not just technical stuff, um, kind of explaining what is happening and what um, the important things are for our customers. And then a nice thing could be to promote more on social media so that we go, we, we have now a site on, on Facebook for the conference, but I think there's no site for Plone. There is, but I didn't, I couldn't find it. No, there's two, there's Plone and Plone CMS. And I so. cannot figure out who owns the Plone one. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> now, trying to get it back, it's registered obviously by somebody in Brazil. But okay. nobody in Brazil actually currently actively remembers, so we're, we're on the way of applying to Facebook, yeah. saying like, hi yeah. there, it's yeah. us, could we have yeah. our stuff back? Yeah. But that takes a long time. It does, it does, yeah, it does. So, and I was thinking, um, I'm, I'm a volunteer for an uh, American football team in Bonn and it's hard to find sponsors, but sponsoring could be a solution to reach out to other companies um, that don't use Plone and just show them how good our system is, better maybe definitely better than the ones uh, the one they are using and get them to sponsor us and so get on this way a better um, brand awareness so these were like my ideas um, when I was thinking about the whole uh, brand awareness thing um, and promoting Plone um, and last year we spoke about the, the topic as well. So I'm kind of uh, curious what um, your ideas are. Um, Lucas, my, my colleague, is uh, writing some things down if we are uh, getting into a discussion. What uh, can you do to promote Plone? Or what are you doing to promote it? Anyone? <laughs> Nobody? <laughs> yeah. Just like mentioned, we, uh, I think one, one of the avenues by which we can meet people is through Python. Just people yeah. are interested in Python. And we probably, we've been doing a better job year by year about having presences at the, both the European and the US Pycons. But one interesting problem we ran into at the US one this year is actually an awful lot of Python programs programmers really do not ironically understand what a community-driven open source project is any longer. Yeah. They assume that everything is company-driven and that there's a catch. <laughs> yeah. We kind of have the, the same issue at, at our company. And I'm always like, okay guys, we have to get into the community and get more in, involved. That's that's important. It's for me. For me, it's important, even though I'm not a developer. But it keeps our developers up to date. What is happening, and maybe they have solutions for problems they to get solved. Yeah. Yeah. There's some obvious things. Um, we actually still have a Google grant for uh, AdWords thingies. I mean, nobody's using it because nobody actually understands. Okay. <laughs> they're all completely like, ooh, it says something about campaigns and stuff. 
stuck mm -hmm. uh, or get how to do it. There was yeah. one person doing it. Um, he didn't do it, so that's been lying dormant, basically, because apparently yeah. nobody actually knows how to do Google Advertising. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an easy pickup for anybody who actually <laughs> wants to do that. Yeah. Um, you do have to, I mean, I sort of totally refresh it every month and change something mm -hmm. just to keep it up, otherwise yeah. you lose it, but I'm no expert there at all, so I put some random stuff in. Okay. But then somebody could do a lot more with it. There's, uh, <coughs> last year, when we released Clone 5, we, we had ambitious plans. I mean, we always have ambitious plans. <laughs> Uh, and we talked about how we wanted to keep talking about the new features in Clone 5. And so and to go with what Eric was saying this morning, we, we release a, a new version and then we start talking about the next one. Well, we really could keep talking about Clone 5 because there are some awesome things in it. Yeah. But we released Clone 5 and then we all ran out of energy. Um, yeah. And then same with Clone.com. Clone we, we created this beautiful Clone.com site and then we added some more success stories, we added some more providers and sponsors, and then we ran out of energy. Uh, then we did clone.org, that, you know, that was a huge effort, we, you know, we've got it done and now we've run out of energy. <laughs> so, um, I think it's, it's, it is clear to me that we just have a limit to the number of people who can promote clone, and there are only so many times that we can drive attention, uh, focus attention on one project. I'd like us to have a more consistent plan, but we also don't have the people to fulfill that mm -hmm. plan. So it sounds to me like we have a new volunteer. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. But we do things like we have uh, on clone.com, we have success stories that we, we are trying to, we try to get, we, you know, but that, that takes effort too, yeah. to, to ask people to keep telling us about new sites and then to write something for us. We have to make news items in clone.org. We have to. We have a monthly newsletter that we used to produce that, that was really good because it collected what was going on and gave people a better sense in the community of what was happening, which is also very important. We, in a lot of cases, developers don't know that so and so is working on that feature that is useful to them. Yeah. Um, so we need to do that, but we also to get money. We have sponsorships for the Clone Foundation, so you know, we need to keep working at that. But we we don't have the money to compete with Drupal or, or WordPress. Yeah. Uh, so it, I'm I know. not really sure how we can go head to head with them. It, I don't think we can. Okay. In terms of that, um, yeah, there, there are, we've got the, the creation process, we've got the main maintenance process. I think we're very good in, in, in creating stuff, creating a new site, creating new projects, but then you have to, at some point, you have to switch into main maintenance mode. And you have to do it on a lower scale, but you still have to feed it. I think that's where you also have to use different kinds of people. You have creation people like bang, new stuff, and work intensely, and then move on to another interesting stuff. And I think there's also another group that can do more of maintenance. Maintenance, which is a bit lower level, mm -hmm. those projects should shift into a kind of maintenance mode after the creation process. And I think that's where a lot of our, our very nice and very cool projects sometimes drop off. We forget to shift them into maintenance mode, and maybe look for other people and say, Look, you don't have to build this website if you are interested in providing. And those necessarily don't have to be the same people. It can, could be completely different teams. I, I want to mention a promotional opportunity. I've been thinking about for some time, and that is getting mind share with uh, cloud hosting companies, which we should be able to do. And actually, one of the reasons why Drupal and PHP in general had a rapid period of growth is that they were very easy to deploy at a time when servers were expensive. And now, now virtual servers are incredibly cheap. And I, you know, I would love for us to have <coughs> presence, you know, certain icons on the sites and articles in the help desks on DigitalOcean, Linode, Rackspace other companies that people would go to looking for cloud hosting opportunities. And they're just running down a list of what can I easily install. Yeah. And there's our logo, brand awareness. Yeah. Yeah, we should, I would, uh, yeah, we are honestly bad at promoting stuff. But like just, I think last week, uh, the Clone Docker 
image now is upgraded to an official one, so that if you go okay. to Docker, it now comes with a big stamp saying official, which is what all the owners had for a while. Mm -hmm. And we have it, but we have, well, it was at a run of the conference and people were flying it, but we should promote the hell out of that. So yeah. that you that can now actually do this by Docker. We still don't know how, what it does, but apparently <laughs> it's very good. Uh, but we are now official. Yeah. Um, which is great. We've been recognized uh, thanks to the people who volunteered to maintain that Docker image. Um, but that, yeah, that is also brand awareness. That makes yeah. it very easy to deploy. Yeah. yeah. Where does Drupal and WordPress get all their money? And why are they supported in so many ways? Venture capital. I think it's really over $100 million in funding. Uh, who did Acquia? And the the other thing I suggest, like the graph on my chart, you showed WordPress. And never show that again because WordPress. I've used WordPress. If I can do it, it's pretty freaking simple. It is. And, and Clone is WordPress. If they want, if they want a two-page website, go. Um, and just never compare, you never compare, never yeah. talk about WordPress and Chrome in the same time. Yeah, well, no. It's kind, of a, it's kind of relevant though that when you have so many people immediately going to WordPress for their simple needs, mm -hmm. and then they get into jobs where they have some say in the choice of the content management system, they don't know that WordPress really isn't the right. It's not a close to that. what right. Chrome can do, but they think, oh, WordPress, so I'm going to use WordPress for this. So there is a bit of a problem there that, that the oxygen really is going out of the room. There are a lot of projects that phone doesn't even get on the list of, of people to get a, a proposal from. Mm -hmm. right? So they just go, well, we'll go with WordPress or we'll go with Drupal, and then that's it. Yeah. One, uh, one, one, sorry, one question would be, if they go with WordPress and they successfully do it, that means WordPress can do it. If they try WordPress, hold on, if they try WordPress and it fails miserably, how can you find out about those and then come in as the phone investor? This, there was a long discussion on how to address this possible chance to jump in, but uh, one uh, additional thing to the pie chart is this uh, the market share of WordPress. There are different approaches to how you can measure market share. You can measure how many websites are reachable online, but you get no idea about the actual value behind these websites. Yeah. So if you have a lot of <laughs> if you have a lot of valueless uh, uh, WordPress sites you can reach from the outside, and you said uh, intranet, usually you don't figure out that it's a proper secured intranet. What kind of system is running behind? Yeah. So you give no uh, security uh, attack vector for that, and you go on in Germany for example on Taco three pages, and you can figure out that they missed to, to, to install the latest patches <laughs> just on, on, on a, a special page. And you see they missed it, and you can attack it, put your own content there, and uh, have a nice effect. Yeah. And one interesting thing is to show how much turnover is done by clone companies or by the companies using yeah. these websites. So the value behind is very interesting. And, and if we are able to figure out how how much is, is uh, valuable content is managed by Chrome compared with less valuable content by yeah. WordPress, the relationship changes a lot. Yeah. We had some numbers uh, of that in the past, but I'm not sure if we have current numbers. Mm, no, I don't think so. But it's a thing of the target group, you know? Yeah. WordPress is like for everyone, and Plone is, is an enterprise CMS. But we all have the problems to create small websites with Plone. Yeah, that's, that's a problem with that kind of comparison. No, we don't. We don't, we don't, don't do them. We don't do them. We don't do small websites no. with Plone. We tell them to go use WordPress. Exactly. That's what they need. They don't need Plone. Yeah. I like small sites with WordPress. Yeah. Uh, with Plone. Yeah. Right. But I don't see the problem with that. I can see why it's not a valuable yeah, the user business for a provider. Right. But there is big value done, right. in having smaller organizations use a proper CMS with whom to grow. Um, I mean, I'm in the lucky circumstance that I don't need a provider because right. I can do it myself. 
but um, I, I actually had these workers and didn't like it. And even for a small site, it outgrew quite quickly the possibilities of WordPress. Yeah. So for the end user, there's definite value in having a small clone site. Yeah. I can see the problem by selling it to a lot of small, uh, sm smaller organizations is a totally different business model where people don't yeah. want to go. But it's... The thing yeah. is that the market, uh, if, if you, you know, let's go on and continue uh, while we, uh, part of the, the, the room here disagrees to use clone on small sites. The thing is that the market share from WordPress grew in a time when it was really expensive to host a big clone site and it was really inexpensive yeah. to do a WordPress one. So that's where WordPress got all its market, yeah. its brand awareness yeah. from and is now benefiting from that. And we are, it's a huge, uh, yeah. uh, uh, how you call it? We're behind that uh, if you want to focus on okay. getting small sites. That's why yeah. that's fast station. No, but that's why I'm with Steve. It is important to have these cloud providers, and then you can say to smaller yeah. organizations that may not be worth your while to mm -hmm. do an expensive consulting process or a non-expensive, but but to say like, well, if you're willing to put some time in, you can actually do it yourself. Um, get them started. There's like ten high quality to choose from, they get started, and once their business or their organization start growing, they will come and look for a provider to help them. Uh, ironically, uh, we will be loved by those cloud companies because we have a huge memory and processor memory hog <laughs> that, uh, that needs at least three or four virtual instances to grow. I mean, yeah, it's, it's cynical. You get a lot of value out of it. You get Actually, a lot of value out of it. For the size of the site, it's really no different from the report at all. No. Um, uh, no, but WordPress, I mean the WordPress and the smaller PHP sites. Uh, I mean a non-trivial WordPress needs to say. Yeah. Yeah. It's re yes. really base limit of ten dollars a month. I can run a big yeah. site. Yeah. Just one site. Yeah. yeah. No, we run yeah. guys in five dollars. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but the, the thing is what you need to sell is the, the value proposition. What why should I the the, the most of the people uh, um, uh, uh, the guy, the designer who's working for for, for Crave on internet he pointed one out, it's for him it's very difficult if you go on a shiny site of a new web framework to ignore the quality of the design of the website and just look at the quality of the framework because you are you're, you just see the bright light and you don't see the dark sides. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult for the average customer as well. So they see there are a lot of nice WordPress themes are available, and they think this the quality of these themes is the quality of WordPress. So it's not yes. just the quality, the visual quality of the front end, but not of the usability you need to, to, to fill the content in. And this is a story you have to tell, and it's not nice to talk about this because it's an issue of someone else or my issue that I cannot provide a nice design. And one possible story was that we can use Diazo to grab all these shiny themes and use these front ends and couple dock them to, to clone, but it's difficult to to, um, to communicate. How do we do that without mm, bashing the others? Just say, okay, it's nice what they do, but if you're running into a front, against the frontier where the, your limitation is, then come to us. And if we, for example, if we could provide automatic transitions from WordPress to Chrome, it would be a great thing. Squarespace does it, for example. Squarespace, they sell a cloud service, very nice designs. And they say, if you are fucked up with your WordPress site, come to us, we have an automatic trans, uh, uh, migration. Even if it's not automatic, they just pretend it. Yes, <laughs> until you make it. When you're sitting in the back of the room, right? uh, so you, you can do a lot of things. Yeah. I just want to say, I actually don't want to compete with WordPress. No, no, no. no, no. From, As I said, WordPress is not a direct competitor. Also, if, you, if you search for consulting companies yeah. for WordPress, you will right. find 20 yeah. in my little town. Yes. Uh, yeah. Most of most of whom are people who are university students hanging up a shingle, and they seriously charge a little more than minimum wage. Yeah. yeah. And they copy their themes from elsewhere. Yeah. yeah. And I can't. I can't. We can't. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. no. WordPress done in Munich for one hundred and fifty dollars. Yes, but <laughs> what, 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 what I wanted to point out is that 
should not try to grab the market share of WordPress yeah. and compete with WordPress. But if you are confronted with a question from a customer pointing that out, you should have the right answers. For it. Yeah. I'd like also to contribute something as a Python developer, uh, which is new to Tom. And I've been working on backends of different companies in the last eight years. And I am a member of Clone and Python user group in Munich for one year. So, and this is how I learned about Clone. And the thing is, that most companies that build an internet that I've seen as like as a startup, they will go and choose Django because it's like flexible and blah blah blah. Or they use WordPress, like you always say, and they either reach the limits of uh, WordPress very quickly, and then they make the let's build our own solution with Django, or they reinvent the wheel, like building some version of clone like thing based on Django. And I think clone, if we like. Clone is so huge, it has its own ecosystem and own conference, like Django has its own conference. But I think if you want to market Clone better, you should have more presence also, like in maybe Django conference. Like now there is, in tomorrow I think, there's a talk from a guy um, showing. Django uh, No, yeah, but there's a lecture of the static uh, sites, uh, like static CMS. Um, which is kind of like very hype now. Um, so I think we should kind of like go and show Django developers, hey Django developers, you don't need to build your own CMS in your company. There is something ready which can help you. I mean, you could make your REST APIs with Django, you can make like your um, something complicated, which you can't really easily do with Django. But eventually so many companies end up <coughs> building a content management system because hey, Django came out of a, of a system of a newspaper, so if we want to make content, let's use Django, which is totally wrong. You invest hours and hours and hours building something which eventually does everything Clone does. And yes. <laughs> the, it's, it, for me, it was a huge shock when I learned <coughs> that because I reflected on all the seven years I was doing Django stuff, and I thought, what a waste of human resources. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, and the second thing is like, <coughs> between, uh, Doc, um, WordPress and, and, and Plone is kind of like comparing between Docker and OpenStack. Every developer <coughs> now wants to do Docker and wants to do it on his computer, but OpenStack is something really big companies are doing. So you build infrastructure, and that's what you can do with Plone. You can make intranets with it. So it's already been said a couple of times here. You don't want to compete with WordPress, yeah. but you might want to have more presence in like not only clone conference but in other Python. And also there's another thing which is I don't think WordPress developers would want to work on clone. They are PHP developers. I definitely think we should talk to more Python developers. I mean they yeah. are our let's say natural audience. No? So and one, one other audience is uh, we saw up today the talk by Eric Bell non-clone developers creating systems in the days of clone. So clone is very nice for system integrators uh, to build something on top and have then the service providers to maintain the basic system, but they can do a lot of configuration and, and development of, of uh, information I would say. I know, the yeah. Of, uh, of clone. And this is also a very interesting audience. They can make money with it. <laughs> Okay, uh, I think we're running out of time. Um, I just want to remind you guys to uh, use the survey app to send feedback. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And yeah, we have now lightning talks, I think. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.